You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5. Happening today, President Trump will campaign in Tampa of team coverage in the Bay Area. Plus, back to school shopping is in full swing, but we're going to tell you what big items aren't included in this weekend's sales tax holiday. And an unusual theft caught on camera how three people stole a shark from a museum. <laughs> Wait until you see how they disguised it. Good morning, Sunco starts right now. I think you've seen it all. I know. Talk about stories I need to know more about. <laughs> Stay right there. Good morning. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. Joining us bright and early, John Scalzi with today's forecast. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be kind of a repeat of yesterday, actually. It was a pretty sloppy day yesterday, although it did add to a little bit of uh, cooler weather during the afternoon. That's the good news, I guess. The temperatures only made it to the upper 80s, and I think we'll do about the same thing again today. At this hour, we've got showers out in Gulf waters, even a few thunderstorms out there. Not a whole lot over land, though we have had a little bit of a light sprinkle around the Inglewood area. Other than that, we do have thunderstorms at this hour out in the Gulf, an indication of how unstable the atmosphere is and how likely it is that we'll see more of those thunderstorms as we get a little daytime heating. Cloud cover will be around, giving us a mostly cloudy day. Temperatures are running just slightly into the mid 70s, upper uh, upper 70s, which is a couple of degrees cooler than yesterday, thanks to an easterly wind. We'll talk about the rain chances for this afternoon coming up in just a few. Back All you. right, thank you, John. Let's check the roads right now. Uh, a little build up there on 301 southbound as you head towards State Road 70, mm -hmm. otherwise pretty clear in Manatee County. Farther south now, we'll see some issues there on uh, uh, Fruitville Road eastbound as you've crossed by uh, Cardinal Mooney at McIntosh, head toward Honoré, and then checking our final map to the south. All right, 501 on your Tuesday morning. Well, today, President Trump will be just a few miles north of the Sun Coast. He plans to fly into Tampa International Airport later on this morning in the hopes of later talking about education at Tampa Bay Technical High School. Our Marla Spence has a preview within our studio. Marla. Hey, good morning, guys. That's right. Preparations are underway right now to welcome President Trump into Tampa. This morning, he will be hopping off Air Force One at Tampa Na International Airport for a full day of busy events. So here's his agenda. First, the president will be at Tampa Tampa Bay Technical High School to promote and highlight vocational technical education and training and workforce development in Tampa. That roundtable discussion will be shortly before six o'clock this evening. Then he will be heading to the Florida State Fairgrounds Expo Hall for rally in support of Congressman Ron DeSantis, who faces off against State Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam in the state's August 28th GOP primary. According to the White House, he will be discussing recent job growths, his domination of of Brent Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court and how important it is for Floridians to get out and vote. That rally will begin at 7 tonight. Doors are expected to open at 4 this afternoon. Today's rally is the 36th rally the president has held in Florida and his eighth rally in the Tampa Bay area since he first began his run for presidency in 2015. Back to you guys. Thank you, Marla. New details this morning on a deadly crash that shut down the interstate at this time yesterday morning in Northport. We now know the name of the victim who died in that crash. The accident happened between the Kings Highway and Toledo Blade Boulevard exits northbound 75. It involved a pickup truck, two SUVs, and a car. Here's the video. 63-year-old Thomas Mikens of Port Charlotte was killed in this accident. One other person was taken to the hospital. The other two had minor injuries. The crash shut down the interstate for seven hours. No word yet exactly what happened. Now to the latest on those devastating California wildfires. There are nine now major wildfires burning out of control as of this morning from one end of the state to the other. Now that car fire in the north is so large and so hot it is actually creating its own weather system with strong wind, so it's making it hard to predict which way that fire will spread. At least 19 people there in the Northern California area are missing because of those fires. It's claimed six lives, including a firefighter and a bulldoze operator also trying to help control. Tonight, with more than 12,000 firefighters battling nine large fires in California alone, the biggest one, the car fire, scorching 150 square miles. This, as we're seeing new images showing that tornado of fire from the air growing explosively late Thursday afternoon, eating its way through entire communities. Gridlock on the roads, evacuees racing to get out. I mean, everybody was three by three on this road gridlocked. 
Tonight, a break in the wind and some relief for evacuated families who have the chance to see what's left. To see it now like this. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty difficult. Among them, Reading Police Chief Roger Moore, taking us to his home of 19 years, now unrecognizable. Your kids lived their entire lives in this house. It's, that part's tough. I haven't really let that digest in yet. Nearly 3,500 firefighters working around the clock in blazing heat, building control lines and putting out hot spots. Residents, too. They just put out this fire down here with their garden hoses, and it's already sparked back up, so now he's going back. Look, there's a helicopter coming in right here. The blaze claiming at least six lives, among them 70-year-old Melody Bledsoe and her two great-grandchildren, five-year-old James and four-year-old Emily. Colin said, Grandpa, you need to come. The fire's coming at our house now. Ed Bledsoe says he raced to get back but couldn't. Their bodies later discovered inside their Reading home. Seven others remain missing. And at the Ferguson fire near Yosemite National Park, Captain Brian Hughes of the Arrowhead Hotshots was killed by a falling tree Sunday. Brian was one of the best. Uh, he was a pillar of strength for that hotshot crew. He's now the fourth firefighter killed in the line of duty in the last two weeks. Nearly a thousand structures destroyed just like this home. And look at this. This home had a tile roof, but there was no stopping this fire. These big, destructive wildfires are now the new normal. Firefighters saying it's basically everyone's worst nightmare. And California hasn't even hit its peak fire season yet. Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Reading. Despite last month's Helsinki summit, new images of North Korea show they may be building new nuclear missiles. According to the Washington Post, new pictures and other information suggest work might be taking place in a suburb of Pyongyang on liquid-fueled intercontinental ballistic missiles. The U.S. National Security Council has no comment on the Washington Post report. Today, a Fort Myers family is mourning the life of their daughter who died during a trip to Israel. Family and friends had a held a vigil last night for 19-year-old Tinya Jones. Now, she was on a seven-week exchange program overseas when she and her friends decided to take a midnight swim at a beach in Tel Aviv. Now, several in that group were caught up in a strong current in the water. Two others, students made it back to shore, but Jones did not. The University of Kentucky sophomore was a biology major and had recently been accepted into a pre-med program. We have good children coming out of our community inspiring to be better and, you know, better their lives. So um, I just poured into my kids, you know, what was poured into me, and I just wanted her um, to have a better life for herself. And this isn't the only tragedy in that family. Just eight months ago, her brother was shot and killed. Former President Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort is giving up civil, a civil case against special counsel Robert Mueller. The decision comes one day before today's criminal trial is set to begin for charges including bank fraud and tax evasion. Jury selection begins today in Virginia. Manafort has pleaded not guilty to the federal charges. None of the charges are related to his work with President Trump. Happening this morning, Manatee County will break ground on a new elementary school in Parrish. It's going to be named in honor of local educator Barbara A. Harvey. 800 students will attend the new school. It officially opens in August of 2019. It's located just off Moccasin Wallow Road in Parrish. Florida's annual back-to-school sales tax holiday kicks off Friday and runs through Sunday. That means no sales tax on clothes and shoes, up to $60 an item, and certain school supplies up to $15. You can find a complete list of the supplies included in this year's tax holiday on our website, mysuncoast.com. And if you are making your back-to-school shopping list for this weekend's sales tax-free holiday, here's a heads up. You won't be able to save on electronics. Now, laptops and other major electronics are not on the list this year. In fact, it's the second time in six years that electronics won't count as tax-free school supplies. But experts also say that won't stop people from heading out to save big. We still expect it to be big. Um, I think that uh, it, it's, it doesn't get old with, with consumers, I think, because everyone needs to go back and, and buy s supplies for their children and or buy clothes for their children. So this is going to continue to be popular. 
So why no tech supplies? While well, they were originally included in the budget proposal this year, but because of the mass shooting at Stoneman Douglas in Parkland, the tax cut was dramatically scaled back and budget priorities shifted. Again, we do have that full list of all the items included this year at MySunCoast.com. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, caught on camera. Officials say three people are being investigated this morning for stealing a shark from a museum. How they disguised it. I just don't understand. And later in the hour, plans for those 3D printed guns will be legally available online this week. We're going to tell you why some states are trying to block those designs from being available to the public. But first, here's a peak of your biggest city in the country, New York City, at 510. Right now it's 69 degrees there and clouds. What's the situation here, John? Well, here it's a little bit warmer and clouds. <laughs> we have a good chance of rainfall again today like yesterday. A 10% chance during the next hour or two. And then as we head into the noon hour, well, we'll probably see temp the uh, temperatures rise up into the 80s, but a rain chance increasing rapidly up to about 40%. Topping out at about 60% rain chance during the afternoon. I've checked the rain box for your drive time forecast both for the commute to work, although there'll be fewer showers around, and the trip back from work, in which case there'll probably be even a few thunderstorms. Complete forecast coming up in a few. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership, both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. What do you get when you cross your tired, aching back with this fragile egg? The Egg Sitter Cushion, an amazing new flex cushion that supports your backside and spine so well, you can sit on an egg without breaking it. Incredible! You want me to sit on this egg? Okay. I can't believe I'm doing this. I don't even feel it. <laughs> it didn't even break? Oh, I was wondering about that. Now that's a good cushion. <laughs> the honeycomb design is constructed of elasticore that absorbs pressure points by collapsing in on itself. That's why even this egg won't break under direct pressure. Now long days at the office will be more comfortable, dinner more enjoyable, and painful car rides a thing of the past. Get your Egg Sitter Support Cushion for just $39.99. It comes with a free non-slip washable cover and our 10-year comfort guarantee. But wait, call right now and you can get a second cushion. Just pay separate fee. Call now. Call 1-800-232-1564. That's 1-800-232-1564. Call now or go to eggsitter.com. Order now. Planning a Carnival Fantasy Cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza Hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. We believe in patriotism. We believe in our nation's youth. We believe veterans earn their benefits through their service to our nation. We believe in a strong national security. We believe in our country. For 100 years, veterans have been impacting our nation through the American Legion, and we believe it makes a difference. If you believe, learn more at legion.org slash we believe. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. First alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 
So we are at 74 degrees right now. We have showers and thunderstorms out in Gulf waters. Not a whole lot over land quite yet. And that's kind of a similar situation to what we had yesterday. Over the next several hours, we'll see those showers, I think, build a little bit closer to the coastline and a better chance of rainfall will ensue this afternoon. 73 degree dew point value, so temperature and dew point pretty close together, hence our relative humidity way up there at 97%. We have an east wind today, a component of the wind out of the east, and that, unlike yesterday when we had a due south wind, has helped to bring us slightly lower temperatures by a couple of degrees uh, in most locations. So it feels pretty nice out there, actually, uh, with the exception of the showers that we'll get this afternoon. I think it'll be a pretty nice day with temperatures held down a little bit by uh, nature's own natural air conditioning system, which is our rainfall in the summer. 77 degrees with a 10% chance of rain by 7 a.m. By noon, we'll go up to about a 40% chance of showers. Maybe a peak at the sun from time to time this morning. That'll cloud up as we head into the afternoon pretty significantly till we get to about a 60% chance of rainfall then. And some of those storms will be yeah, kind of heavy, producing some pretty good rainfall. And a pop or two of lightning, certainly not out of the question this afternoon. As we head into the evening hour, rain showers chances kind of taper down just a little bit to about 40%. Lots of activity out here in the Gulf this morning. We had some showers down to the southern tip of the state as well. All of this kind of riding on that southeasterly wind flow today. They'll uh, gradually drift closer to us. I think you'll see your showers today either coming at you from the Gulf waters a little later this afternoon or coming up from the due south or southeast uh, through the morning hours. One lone shower, as I mentioned, around the Inglewood area has since dissipated, is now located off the shoreline. And we do have those pops of lightning out there in Gulf waters. You'll be able to see it light up the sky just a little bit, even from uh, areas um, close to shore. We're looking at uh, a couple of uh, areas of uh, uh, rivers uh, having hit bankful already. So additional rainfall aggravating that. We're looking at minor flooding really on the Manatee and the Horse Creek and uh, Peace River. All of those at bankful right now. Lots of cloud cover across the region. It'll be a mostly cloudy day today. As I mentioned, you might get a peak or two at the sun. Yes, that's true, but then things will cloud up pretty quickly as we get more showers building and moving in. The sunshine actually helping to just to stabilize the atmosphere a little bit. So if you look at the water vapor imagery, which is a great tool to show you where the swirls and motions are in the atmosphere, you'll kind of be able to trace out from west to east kind of a ridge to the west, a trough in the center of the country, and then another ridge coming off the east coast of the United States. That kind of translates to a high pressure area, a low pressure area, and another high pressure area out in the Pacific. That is a tough pattern to break, and consequently, it is going to be around for several more days. With that high out in the Atlantic, we get that southerly wind. It pumps the moisture, the deep tropical moisture, right across the state of Florida. And we get the much needed rainfall across the state. I say much needed because this is our rainy season. This is when we get two thirds of our rainfall for the entire year during this rainfall season. So not terribly out of the ordinary. Every summer we get uh, a half a dozen days where you have this kind of inclement weather off and on all day long, hit and miss showers coming at you throughout the day. And that's going to be the case again today with this southeasterly wind flow. Another good rain chance day, mostly cloudy skies and a little bit drier this weekend. I think we'll have some drier air kind of trying to work its way in. In this graphic, redder is wetter across the peninsula. Very wet air is now in place. The drier air will be arriving, I think, by the weekend or maybe even on Friday and that could help reduce our rain chances significantly as we head into that time frame. For today, south wind coming in at about 10 knots, boat is switching a little southeast, but of course you'll be dodging those showers and thunderstorms out in Gulf waters. Go with a 60% chance of showers today, tomorrow, probably the day after as well, or close to on Thursday. The drier air starts to filter in. We'll begin to reduce rain chances, certainly by Saturday, maybe even by Friday. I think we'll get more sunshine around on Friday, and the volume of rain will decrease, but we'll still have a good rain chance day on Friday. Sunday, about a 40% chance, and then next Monday, we'll start to up the rain chances once again. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, John. Let's check out the traffic starting off in Manatee County. Roads are looking pretty good at this hour. No real bumps or traffic delays to tell you about there. Heading into Sarasota County, those roads are also looking pretty decent for the most part. You can see right there, there's a little bit of congestion coming off of 75 onto B Ridge, but that's about it for that spot. If you're heading south on 75 or 41, both of those are running pretty smooth as a 519. That's your first alert traffic. 
All right, well, here is the strangest story you might hear all week. And for once, it's not from Florida. Police in Texas are investigating three people who say they stole a shark from an aquarium. Wait for it by sneaking it out in a baby stroller. Surveillance video actually captured these three uh, weirdos at the San Antonio Aquarium on Saturday. The horn shark was actually out in this open air exhibit, meaning it's one of those tanks that you can put your hands in and get all touchy feely with the sharks in. But these three didn't just touch the fish. They grabbed the shark by the tail and then took off, threw it in the stroller. Now, it also seemed like they really had it all planned out. I've seen a lot of, of uh, dogs and cats stolen, um, but never a shark. They took the shark and put it into a, uh, a wet blanket and threw it in a stroller and left with it. This is uh, definitely somebody who knows what they're doing, what they had, and then when they're specifically for that shark. Now, this story actually does have a happy ending. The shark was found alive, slightly confused, but is now back home. Police are interviewing a person of interest in the case. They're all going to be charged with theft, and they might be facing some federal counts in there as well. What were they going to do with it? I don't know. That's like the most important <laughs> thing. Like, what are you doing with a shark? Unless they're going to maybe put it on the black market, sell it to yeah. a rare aquarium store. Yeah, like good. That. A baby stroller. It's creative. Yeah, so many questions. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, Harley Davidson is coming out with a new electric motorcycle. We'll tell you when the new live wire goes on sale. That's in today's Tech Bites. And next half hour, what's this? An entire police force resigned? The conditions they say gave them no choice. 521 right now. Look outside our studio. There you see it, the Rosemary District. Should see a relatively mild day, only upper 80s for a change. Kind of ironic, isn't it? <laughs> only upper 80s. Yeah, crazy. It's a, we're having a cooling spell all of a sudden. Good chance of rain, though. John's forecast and more news coming up on Good Morning Sun Coast. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cdc.gov concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. At Boys and Girls Clubs, it's not just about trying new things. Tanya, come here. Learning the right steps. Two, three, four. Or making contact. It's not just about exploring the future. It's about helping them build it. It's about making the connection. It's about proving every kid and teen who enters our doors has what it takes. Great futures start here. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. 
Well, welcome back. It is 524. Movie Pass angers customers over the weekend and Harley Davidson debuting a new electric motorcycle. The stories in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Movie Pass is struggling to stay afloat. Movie Pass offers subscribers a movie a day for a flat fee of $9.95, but the service experienced outages the past few days and the company is running low on cash. Deals to share costs with major studios never materialized and stocks have plunged 60%. Investors will be closely watching the Nasdaq today after the tech-heavy index posted its biggest three-day loss since March. Tech stocks have been hit hard in the recent days with losses at Facebook and Netflix. And today, Apple will report its earnings. And finally, Harley-Davidson's glance into the future. The iconic motorcycle maker says its first electric model will go on sale next year. That's five years after it was first previewed. Harley also says upcoming products could include two-wheelers, possible scooters, or even electric bicycles. It takes a while to get there. Those are your Tech Bites. Tech Bites. Sponsored by Safe Light Auto Glass. At Safe Light Auto Glass, we really pride ourselves on making it easy for you to get your windshield fixed. Let's turn in your science papers. This teacher always puts her students first. I did mine on <gasps> You did? Oh, I can't wait to read it. So when she had auto glass damage, oh. she chose Safe Light. With Safe Light, she could see exactly when we'd be there. You must be Pascal. Yes, ma'am. Saving her time. <laughs> so she can save the science project. Salads should look like this. Crisp leaves of lettuce, freshly made dressing, clean food that looks this good, delivered to your desk. Now delivering to home or office. Panera, food as it should be. Overwhelming air fresheners can send you running. So try Febreze One with no aerosols and no heavy perfumes. So you can spray and stay. <sighs> Febreze One. At Tidewell Hospice, we know it's never too late to say thank you to our military veterans. The Tidewell Honors Veterans Program has provided care to more than 13,000 military families since 2008. Tidewell volunteers help honor veterans through special pinning ceremonies that demonstrate our appreciation for the freedom our veterans fought to defend. If you know a veteran who can benefit from end-of-life care, call or visit Tidewell.org today. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. What do you get when you cross your tired, aching back with this fragile egg? The Egg Sitter Cushion, an amazing new flex cushion that supports your backside and spine so well, you can sit on an egg without breaking it. Incredible! You want me to sit on this egg? Okay. Can't believe I'm doing this. I don't even feel it. <laughs> it didn't even break? Oh, I was wondering about that. Now that's a good cushion. <laughs> the honeycomb design is constructed of elasticore that absorbs pressure points by collapsing in on itself. That's why even this egg won't break under direct pressure. Now long days at the office will be more comfortable, dinner more enjoyable, and painful car rides a thing of the past. Get your Egg Sitter Support Cushion for just $39.99. It comes with a free non-slip washable cover and our 10-year comfort guarantee. But wait, call right now and you can get a second cushion. Just pay separate fee. Call now. Call 1-800-232-1564. That's 1-800-232-1564. Call now or go to eggsitter.com. Order now. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama black belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, fishing, or biking and hiking. Or play the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy the flavors of the black belt. Book your adventure at our lodges or stay in the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama black belt adventure today. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can too. For free help, visit cdc.gov slash tips.
You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5.30. Happening later today, President Trump arrives for a visit to Tampa. We'll tell you what's on his itinerary for the visit. Plus, parking lot fallout. We'll tell you why the Florida Black Caucus wants to change Florida's Stand Your Ground law. And summer heat means more air conditioning and a big spike in your electric bill. We're going to have some ways to cut those costs. We have those stories plus your first alert forecast right now on Good Morning Sun Coast. Good morning to you. It is 530 on this Tuesday morning. I'm Stephanie Webb. I'm Ray Collins. Yesterday afternoon it began to rain and then it started continued raining and then it stopped and rained some more. I feel like there's a theme here. Yeah, a lot of rain yesterday. What do you got today, John? More rain. <laughs> Passing showers throughout the day. Right now during the morning hours, I think most of the drive time commute will probably be pretty quiet as the bulk of the showers remains out in Gulf waters. But we've already had a few kind of tag the shore this morning around the Inglewood Rotunda area have seen a few light patches of drizzle. As we head into the afternoon, I think more and more of the showers that we see in the Gulf will start to pop up on land and our rain chances will begin to go up. We've also got a few thunderstorms out there as well, so some much needed rainfall around. However, it comes at a price and some of the area rivers have already hit bankful. So uh, the Peace River, the Horse Creek, uh, areas of Little Manatee and Manatee River all looking uh, to be at or slightly above flood stage, creating some minor flooding issues over the course of the next several days and more rainfall on the way again today. A lot of cloud cover around as well, leading to a mostly cloudy afternoon. That'll keep our temperatures down just a little bit, uh, but we'll also have about a 60% chance of showers this afternoon. We'll have the complete forecast for you coming up in just a few. Thank All you right, guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking the roads now. Not too much so far in Manatee County. A little slow down there on State Road 70 eastbound after you get past 301. Otherwise, not bad. Checking the northern half of Sarasota County now. We'll see uh, just some uh, some areas in the uh, caution range. Not too much, for example, Bee Ridge Road westbound as you go from the interstate across Cattleman, across Honoré, and head toward McIntosh. And then farther south, we'll check that map. And uh, nothing really in the red. Pretty clear right now at 532. Plans for 3D printed guns will be legally available online as of tomorrow, but several states are still trying to block the release of those designs. Reporter Andrew Spencer has the latest. Urging the federal government to withdraw from its settlement with Defense Distributed, attorneys general from 20 states and Washington, D.C. sent this letter Monday stating that, quote, in addition to helping arm terrorists and transnational criminals, the settlement and proposed rules would provide another path to gun ownership for people who are prohibited by federal and state law from possessing firearms, end quote. The settlement reached in June ended a years-long legal battle between the State Department and a Texas company called Defense Distributed, which first posted designs for a 3D printed handgun in 2013. The company insists sharing the plans is protected free speech, but gun control advocates argue the plans go much further than that. This is not simply instructions. This is download, plug, and play. Many policymakers have been pushing back for weeks. I ask the State Department to please reconsider this decision. I think it has long-term national security and domestic security uh, considerations for our country. And on Monday, attorneys general from several states and the District of Columbia filed a lawsuit in federal court asking for a temporary restraining order to block the settlement. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. Florida's Legislative Black Caucus wants to change the state's Stand Your Ground law. This after the shooting death of a man who pushed another man down earlier this month in a Clearwater parking lot. The Black Caucus says new legislation would aim to address the confusion in the law that resulted in the Pinellas County Sheriff declining to press charges on that shooting. Now the mayor of Tallahassee, who is also running for governor, wants Governor Rick Scott to declare a state of emergency over the law. We know that stand your ground as it exists in this state has created the opportunity for people to take into their own hands a decision to be judge, jury, and executioner. Now, to change this, supporters must first get 20 members of the legislature to support the request. That might be the easier part. Then, the more challenging part, getting three-fifths support in both chambers. And keep in mind, both chambers are majority Republican. 
an entire police department in Massachusetts resigned last night, and it all has to do with the conditions that they were working in. First, the officers from the police department in Bladford, Massachusetts, say the cruisers there barely run. The bulletproof vests are expired and don't even fit the officers. They also say the police radios don't work in many of the areas of town, making it unsafe for the officers, especially at night. All four officers in that department resigned last night, effective immediately. And the Kilauea volcano still wreaking havoc on the big island of Hawaii. The latest, a brush fire triggered by lava flow, has burned down four homes. Now that brings a tally to at least 720 homes destroyed by the volcano eruption. Now that lava, as you can see, is still flowing. It is still entering the ocean. The National Park Service shared a recent photo of a sea arch, and you can see that huge crack right in there, right near the road, as well as small cracks throughout the entire area. Florida is sending more firefighters to battle the wildfires in California. This weekend, the State Forest Service deployed a 12-member team from North Florida to bring five brush trucks to the effort. They should arrive tomorrow in California. The state previously sent 20 hand crew firefighters to help suppress a fire in the Sierra National Forest that's estimated to take two more weeks to fully contain. And check this out, satellite images showing smoke from both the Carr Fire, that's the one near Reddington, Cal Redding, California, excuse me, and the Ferguson Fire near Yosemite National Park. Now the state of emergency is still in effect there for both. All right, look at these newly released photos from the Pentagon. It shows North Korea's transfer of remains of American soldiers killed in the Korean War. Vice President Pence will be in Hawaii tomorrow to officially receive those remains during a ceremony at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. Back in this area, the superintendent of Sarasota County Schools is calling for a criminal investigation against the principal of a Manatee County School. According to an official statement from the school board, the principal in question is Eddie Hundley of Lincoln Memorial Academy. The school board wants to know why he gave a positive recommendation for Quentin Peterson. He's a teacher who's currently under investigation for inappropriate behavior with students. Peterson was arrested this past spring on possession of child pornography charges. Now the summer temperatures are rising and that means your energy bill is too. In today's Consumer Watch, Karen Kaifa has some ways to cut those costs. It's summertime and chances are you're running the air conditioner around the clock just to stay comfortable. And if the cost of cooling off in the middle of summer has you sweating, we have you covered. Besides keeping the AC at 78 degrees Fahrenheit, here are three tips to keep cooling costs low. Number one, change the filters. This is likely the easiest air conditioning maintenance you can do, and yet it's not done often enough. Number two, clean the coils on the outside unit. This is especially important if you don't use a cover because dirt, mud, and debris can clog up the unit and make it work sluggishly. Also, make sure the concrete slab is level. If it's not, the unit will work harder to keep your house cool. And number three, check the ductwork for leaks. Sealing leaky ducts can lead to major savings on cooling and heating. Experts say look for disconnected joints, separated pieces, and small holes in the ductwork. You can seal them yourself or hire a professional. Stay cool. For Consumer Watch, I'm Karen Kafa. Happening now, the city of Sarasota is hiring as it gets ready to take on the operation and maintenance of five parks and recreation areas in the city. The county had taken care of the city parks. That's changing now. The city is therefore looking for qualified people to become part of the parks and rec team. Positions range from landscape professionals to lifeguards. The parks include Payne Park, Arlington Park, and the Robert L. Taylor Community Complex. We're two weeks away from the first day of school. <gasps> And buying school supplies seems to get more expensive every year. But one local business is trying to ease the stress for a few families in the community. Now, it all started with a Facebook post offering to help with some school supplies for one family. But after seeing how many people needed the help, Jessica Myers decided to help a few more. So she got the help of her boss at Johnny Bugs Pest Control in Northport. And they're now sponsoring five families who need some help this school year. They're using their own money to purchase dozens of notebooks, pens, pencils, everything on the list of five elementary to high school students in Northport. 
Well, it's really great to be able to have the means to take care of these kids. I know that a lot of these kids are, are not taken care of and not getting what they need on a regular basis. Um, and we're just so blessed to be able to reach out and support more families in the community as well. And if that's not cool enough, they're actually going to be surprising these kids with all of these school supplies closer to the beginning of school. Professional grocery shoppers are reporting some big profits. Yeah, one Central Florida man says he's making more and buying by buying and delivering groceries than he ever did as a school teacher. Ed Hennessy's passion was teaching, but he said he never earned more than $50,000 a year. So he became a shopper for a grocery delivery service. Now he says he's making six figures. But he says he still does missing, miss the classroom. And I don't think there is a way to turn it around unless you're going to offer more money. He says his life is different now. He's making more money, but he's also working up to 60 hours okay. per you? week. Still ahead, a live preview of President Trump's trip to Tampa later on today. We'll tell you where he's going and how you can still get tickets. Plus why the Red Cross is in a blood shortage right now and some incentives to donate throughout the next month. But first. There's a live shot of the downtown Sarasota area. Pretty shot there. It is July 31st, Tuesday. John, what's the special of the day? Uh, we'll have wet weather for the special of today, tomorrow, and probably the day after as well. So kind of a period of uh, inclement weather. If you're itching to get to the beach, though, uh, not great news in terms of red tide. Mont Marine reports Siesta Key is now having intense amounts of red tide irritant in the air. So is Gasparilla. Other beaches range from moderate to uh, low levels of the red tide toxin. Winds will generally be out of the west a little later on today. We'll have only one beach ball out of four today for your beach walk forecast. Mostly cloudy skies, rain showers at about 60% coverage. Complete forecast in a minute. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied and her caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs, stop the crimes. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph or tragedy, the Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. Now your 
ABC7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. We have a 74 degree air temperature. We have a dew point value coming in at 73. Heat index is nothing to speak of. It's coming in about the same as the air temperature actually at 74. And we have a uh, easterly wind flow. That little bit of an easterly wind today as opposed to the southeasterly wind, the southerly wind that we had yesterday is allowing our temperatures to drop a degree or two in most locations. So it's slightly cooler. Dew points are slightly lower than they were 24 hours ago, thanks to the outflow from all that rain shower activity yesterday and that shift in the wind now out of the east. So it feels a little bit more comfortable, I suppose, as you head out the door this morning. But don't let that fool you. There's still going to be plenty of showery activity around today. No doubt about it. Thunderstorms as well. So 20% chance by 9 a.m. of a shower or two. Maybe a glimpse at the sun during the morning hours before the clouds start to thicken and fill in those gaps. As we head into the afternoon and into the evening, I think we'll have a mostly cloudy sky. And the rain shower chance probably again today, heading up to about 60% this afternoon. And some of the storms could drop a lot of rainfall once again. We'll look for the uh, rain shower chances to kind of taper off as we head into the evening hours, just as it did yesterday. High temperature about 87 today for a daytime high. So plenty of rainfall across the state of Florida yesterday and still more on the way again today and probably tomorrow as well. I don't think that this particular pattern that we're looking at right here is going to change a whole lot. We have this southeasterly wind flow that's going to be kind of consistent. That's going to drive the moisture up this way, and it's going to bring us those good chances of rainfall with a little daytime heating, a few thunderstorms as well. We already have a few areas of drizzle popping up now near Arcadia. The bulk of the heavy rain still out in Gulf waters. That's where the lightning pops are as well. So if you're near shore and you see those off in the distance, that's what's going on. We also have many of our area creeks and rivers at bank full and in the minor flood stage. I'll detail exactly what those rivers are and what the flood stages are on our website, mysuncoast.com and give you the actual numbers there. Uh, it's a long and a detailed thing and you'll find it on that on that uh, web page. So as far as our weather today goes, lots of cloud cover around and that cloud cover is going to be uh, kind of with us probably for the next couple of days. Not exactly picture perfect Chamber of Commerce weather, but we need the rain. As I mentioned, we get two thirds of our rainfall during this rainy season and we are smack dab in it right now. So it's good that we get this rainfall recharges our aquifers. If you look at the uh, flows in the uh, atmosphere right now, we have this big trough of low pressure in the jet stream right through the center of the country. That's helping to keep a big ridge of high pressure located right here in the Atlantic, and that is what directs our winds at the surface out of the southeast or south again today. So watch for that southerly wind flow to continue if you're a boater today. But You'll be dodging those showers. You'll be dodging those thunderstorms once again with an excellent chance, even better chance out in Gulf waters of seeing rainfall. Two foot seas, light chop. As we head into the afternoon, look for that 60% chance of showers to be with us. Same thing again tomorrow, day after. And as we head into Friday, some drier air starts to work in. A little bit more sunshine on Friday. Certainly that'll be true over the weekend when our rain chance drops to about 40%. We'll increase the rain chance again next work week. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, John. Let's check out your first alert traffic. We do have one hot spot to tell you about right there in Manatee County. If we can bring that up real quick, we'll tell you what's going on in the area. Right there on 684 Cortez Road westbound, there's a lane blocked at 75th Street. So Cortez Road westbound, there's a lane blocked right there at 75th Street. Then heading into Sarasota County, those roads are still not looking too bad. We still do have a, a couple of uh, cars that are causing a little bit of congestion coming off of 75 onto B Ridge but that's really about it in that area. If you're heading south on 75 or 41, both of those are running pretty smooth so far at this hour. It is 548 and that is your first alert traffic. Well, today, President Trump will be just north of the Sun Coast. Later this afternoon, he's going to be making two big appearances in Tampa. Our Marla Spence joins us now with a preview of the president's appearance. Marla? Hey, good morning, guys. Right now, preparations are underway to welcome President Trump into Tampa just after 5 o'clock tonight. He'll be arriving on Air Force One at the Tampa International Airport, then gearing up for two big events. First stop, Tampa Bay Technical High School, and the next, a rally at the Florida State Fairgrounds. The president plans to speak on the recent drop growth, the importance for Floridians to vote, and his support of GOP gubernatorial candidate Congressman Ron DeSantis. Both events are expected to draw thousands, including a group of 100 Suncoast residents who are planning on traveling together to support 
President Trump's visit. Of course, with today's visit, the president of the president, demonstrators are also expected to be out in numbers. Two busloads of demonstrators are traveling from Tampa, well, to Tampa from Sarasota and Manatee County. The group plans on bringing signs and shouting chants and bringing attention to the Rus Russia investigation, family separation, and environmental issues. We spoke to both the groups, the supporters and demonstrators, and this is what they had to say about the president's visit. I hope Tampa's ready for us. Uh, everybody's real excited to see President Trump, as always. We just all have to stand up and protect the democracy that is our country. We have to speak up. We have to speak out loudly. Now, according to President Trump's agenda, that roundtable discussion at Tampa Bay Technical High School will be shortly before 6 this evening. Following that, his rally will begin at 7 tonight at the Florida State Fairgrounds, but doors are expected to open at 4 this afternoon. This is the president's 36th rally in Florida and his eighth rally in the Tampa Bay area since, his first be since he first began his run for presidency in 2015. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Marla. Right now, the American Red Cross needs donors. The is facing an emergency shortage and all blood types are needed. The Red Cross is hoping to lure more donors by offering gift cards. In fact, if you give blood or platelets, the Red Cross will send you a $5 Amazon gift card. And here's a great story of the morning. A five-year-old little boy in Missouri got a big surprise this week, his very own horse. So why was this such a big event? Well, Nate Pritchard has congenital heart disease and three years ago he told his parents and the folks with Make-A-Wish all he'd ever wanted was his very own horse. And his wish finally came true. You gotta watch this. Watch the moment that little Nate realizes that the horse in the barn is actually his. You finally got your horse. Yeah, how about that? What do you mean? <laughs> I love you. Now, as for Nate's heart condition, his parents say right now he is stable, so that means he'll, able, he'll be able to enjoy his brand new horse. Wow. I love that. Great story of the morning. <laughs> Kisses there for mom. I know. Very thankful little That's boy great. out there. He's, okay. he's in stable, and the horse is in the stable, too. Oh, boy. Good to hear. Oh. 5.51 right now. We'll come back and have the day's top news headlines for you. And first, here's a peek outside. That's right. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast right here on ABC7. It's hard to see when you're outside at night. It's time for the Atomic Beam Sunblast, the new solar-powered light that's super bright. Atomic Beam Sunblast lets you add a light anywhere, and the atomic solar panels charge the built-in lithium-ion battery quickly. Then the 180-degree motion sensor turns on the light when you get near and automatically turns off when you disappear. Look, here's a best-selling outdoor solar light. And here's the Super Bright Atomic Beam Sunblast. Get the Super Bright Atomic Beam Sunblast for only $19.99. But wait, call right now and you can double your order and get a second sunblast. Plus, our best-selling Atomic Beam Flashlight. Just pay a separate fee. That's two Atomic Beam Sunblasts and the Atomic Beam Flashlight. Call now. Call 1-800-431-6640. That's 1-800-431-6640. Or visit mysunblast.com. So call 1-800-431-6640. Order now. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama Black Belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, canoeing, camping, and more. Or challenge yourself on Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy a Deep South dining experience. Book your adventure in one of our members' lodges or stay at the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama Black Belt adventure today. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org slash hope. This is your brain, this is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why is heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. 
Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Welcome back. It's 5.55, and here's the headlines for this morning. President Trump will be in Tampa today. He'll rally support for Congressman Ron DeSantis' run for Florida governor. Plus, if you're making your school supply list for this weekend's big sales tax-free holiday, a heads up, big electronics like laptops are not on the list this year. And a Port Charlotte man was killed after a four-car crash at this time yesterday on I-75. It shut down all northbound lanes for seven hours yesterday. No word yet what happened. And right now, let's have a last look at your forecast from John Scalzi. Three takeaways for you this morning. One, it's going to be another good rain chance day. Expect to see those showers around, even a thunderstorm or two. Tropics are calm right now. Good news there. And I think maybe the weekend might be just a little bit drier. Back to you. All right, so big day in Tampa. President Trump arrives about 5.20 on Air Force One. He's got two appearances at Tampa Bay Tech right. and then over to the uh, Florida State Fairgrounds. Right. One of those, I, I'm interested in the first one at Tampa Technical, is going to be talking about the STEM program and how important it is for mm -hmm. science and technology yeah. and engineering and all those things as well. So right. we've got the full itinerary for you coming up this next hour. All that and John's forecast straight ahead on the second hour of Good Morning Suncoast. Stay with us.